Hello, hello, hello. It is one o'clock. Making sure everything is starting and the channel is receiving content. I'm hoping that you guys are able to hear me. If you're not able to hear me, let me know. And welcome. We going we are going to start at 101 on the dot. Um making sure everything is good to go. It looks like it's receiving the content. It's green. That's always a good thing, and I'm happy for that. All right, all right. It looks like we're live right now. Awesome. Great. All right. So 1 o'clock, we're going to start at 101. It's close to 101. It is 101 right now. <laughs> all right, guys. Welcome back to episode uh, 29 from the TSR short for the server room every saturday at 1 p.m used to be at 3 p.m eastern standard time but i changed the time a little bit and uh yeah so episode 29 wow 29 episodes i can't believe we're done so much this year and uh, hopefully the following year we could do much more so let's get down to it because there's a lot of stuff that we need to cover and uh if you have the power to leave a comment uh, leave a comment, say hi or whatever. Let me know where you're from. I always love to know how far this show is going to. Make sure you hit that like button and also uh, share, share, share the knowledge, right? We're all here to learn together. Uh, so let's get started. And I have a nice little cheat sheet. So we're going to go over some announcements and let's go over some announcements real quick. And first things first, I just want to give a big thanks to Lenovo for hooking us up with the X3500 M5 uh, because I think the last two shows that we did together, we did a little bit of Prox Mox VE 5.1 in, you know, in, in installation and configuration. And uh, some of the announcements would be I created a Discord, Discord server. A lot of you guys requested that on the last episode. Uh, this is the link, btnhd.com forward slash TSR, the server room, Discord. That link is at the bottom of the video. Click on it, subscribe. Uh, I really don't know what I'm going to do with it yet. I, I My thoughts is integrating it within the server room show, but I'm still working on that. Uh, GitHub, just a notification or a reminder that uh, all the notes for the server room, as well as any video that I post on my channel, that contains notes like scripts or whatever to make your life easy. I put everything in one centralized location. This link could also be located at the bottom of the video uh, within the description part. Uh, starting hopefully today uh, and then future videos, I'm going to start adding timestamps to the videos. The reason why is because sometimes I just talk so much crap and I know a lot of you guys just don't have time for that. You just want the information. Just click on the link. Uh, and it takes you directly to where you need to go and you're good to go. So starting today, hopefully I'm going to start putting types, uh, timestamps. Okay. Uh, after 1118. So next week is November 18th. That's going to be the server room episode 30. Uh, that's going to be the last episode. Uh, not, not the very last episode, but after the following week is going to be Thanksgiving week. Uh, I'm definitely not going to be doing the server room then, but, uh, on November 18th, it's going to be episode 30th. The following week, it's going to be Thanksgiving week. I'm going to take two weeks off, uh, spend some time with the family, my son, whatever, and uh, start thinking of other things that I'm going to do for you guys and end the year real strong, right? Okay. So that's done with the announcement. Awesome sauce. No, get out of here. Uh, shout out to the number one chatter. I want to give a big shout out to Alex Lopez. Uh, he was the number one chatter for last week's uh, show. So thank you so much for the support and just being a, a, a huge chatter. <laughs> All right. And uh, we're going to go over the ISO and Proxmox VE issue. I know the title of the stream basically states uh, Windows 10. It, it states this. I upgrade to Windows 10 v1709 with seccm v1706 i know that that's the reason why you guys came in here but i felt like i cheated you on the last episode because we didn't 
get to create a virtual machine. Now, we're going to go over it real quick, and we're going to let it run behind the scenes, and then we're going to continue. So th these are the two things that we're going to go over right now. So I'm going to open up this guy, and let's see. Okay, got a little connection issue, so I guess I timed out. Let's close that up real good, and let's open up the Chrome. And the issue that I had on the last episode was importing an ISO within our uh, Proxmox, yeah, Proxmox VE infrastructure. Uh, for some reason, it just took forever. I found a way to do it. It was like a like a cheat way to do it. All right, I cheated a little bit, and I'm going to show you guys how I cheated. So on the last show, we added a Windows directory. And the Windows directory, when you add it within the this environment, it creates other subfolders, right? I'm going, this is the, the Windows share folder that we created. If I go to contents, you're going to see the two ISOs. Now, this is the folder right here. And it creates other folders. I told you guys it was within the images that the ISO files are dropped in. That's not the case. It's actually dropped in inside templates. And there's an ISO folder within templates, which is weird. And then... All I did was just copy and paste my ISOs in here and refresh the page, and then you're good to go. Plus, I wasn't, I wasn't really thinking, and a lot of you guys said, putty into the console. So, yeah, I'm, I'm, I finally installed putty, and I puttied in. So, because the shell command with using the, the web interface of Proxmox, Proxmox VE wasn't working. And so I putty in, and right now I'm in it. So if I do like a CD mount... PC BTNHD, which was the folder that we created, and we mounted our window share to this particular folder. If I hit enter and I do a ls dash, there it goes. That's the dump. And if I do, uh, I think templates and ISO, there it goes. And I do this, there goes our ISO. So cool. All right. So that issue that we had with the whole ISO stuff worked out. And I just want to do a quick create a virtual machine. So real simple. Let's create a virtual machine. And right now it's going to, we only have one node. That's the name of our node. And we're going to give it a VM ID by default is 100, but you can change it to whatever you want. We're going to call this, let's say uh, TSR uh, 029 tests, right? Resource pool. We don't have anything. We don't have any resource pool. And next thing that you want to do is, oh, it looks like we have a red mark. This is not a valid DNS. Oh, okay. So let's do this. Uh, BJ dash test. There you go. Underscore doesn't work, it looks like. So let's, go, let's just call it BJ dash test. And let's click on next on that. And from here, you are able to not use in media or use a physical CD, DVD, uh, DVD drive. For me, I have an ISO, so I'm going to pick that, and the ISO image, boom. So it's actually, it automatically picked our Windows directory that we picked, that we created or mounted, right? So I'm going to create a Windows 7 machine, real small. Uh, it's not too smart. You would think automatically, well, uh, within VMware or Hyper-V, you have to tell it what type of OS. So it's a Microsoft Windows and it gives you a crap load of versions right now i am doing a windows 7 and we're going to click on next the hard drive uh we are going to drop it within our data store uh storage remember the data storage is what we went inside our uh proxmox within the shell we went in here and we did a ls what is it ls ls oh, crap can't type today lsblk and we found our partition and we did the CF disk and we created our partition just using that. So hopefully you guys understood that. The notes are within the, uh, the GitHub repository. So um, I'm going to drop it inside our data storage and I'm, let's give it uh, 100 gigs because we have a lot of space there. You could, you could choose the default no cache, direct syncs, uh, right through, back through. Cool. I'm going to leave it as the default. And uh, we're going to click on next. Now, the CPU, this guy has a lot of CPUs, so I'm just going to go crazy and give it four. Let's give it four sockets, and let's give it four cores. 
The D4 is going to be a KVM64, but if you really want to get into it and you know what type of processor you have, just go for it. I'm going to leave it as the default one. So total is 16 cores. Wow, that's a lot. And we're going to click on next. And for memory, uh, I'm just, let's see, for memory, let's give it 496, 4 gigs, right? Click on next. Beautiful. For network, uh, you got all different types. I'm going to leave everything as the default. And for the model, you can even break it down to different models. I like it. I like it a lot. It's cool. Click on next on that. Nice little summary of what's going on. Click finish. And there goes our beautiful virtual machine. Awesome. Cool. So if I right click on it and I go to console, something popped up. And allow. Let's do done. Let's do that one more time. Right click and console. Yes, there you go. It's connecting. Failed to connect to the server. So let's power it on and right click on it. Hit start. It looks like uptown. Uh, it's up time. It's a uh, console in. Different ways to do it. It's connecting right now. Look at that. Beautiful. So I'm going to let this run behind the scenes while the show is happening so we can continue with the show. I just wanted to show you guys that we got our prox mox ve 5.1 up and running you know uh, i i i feel I, I don't know i feel like i cheated you guys last week because the iso stuff didn't import and you know what I, I you know i wanted to show you guys it's working so let's get in here let's click on next real quick install and let us set up a starting and we're just gonna just do like a quick virtual machine windows 7 i think this is 32 bit awesome all right okay we're gonna accept the license this is something that a lot of you are used to seeing right awesome and we're just gonna let that ride and we're gonna check on it on the end of the show right so next thing is start video so you're probably saying to yourself what do you mean about start video okay so i'm going to let's see if I could get myself up and running over here real quick. Okay. Excellent. Let's see. Let me switch the scene for you guys. Awesome. So I have my phone right here. And again, we're upgrading a Windows 7, right? Windows 7, uh, a Windows 7, or not Windows 7, a Windows 10 machine and two seventeen oh nine. Now the process, when I was testing everything out within my lab, took literally 77 minutes an hour and a half there's no way in hell i don't want you guys to be you know waiting around to get it to you know to see it deploy successfully so i recorded it and i'm gonna play it right now f for you guys and we're gonna let this run All right right now i'm doing the same connect to tv and it's running right now and i'm gonna show you guys right now you look at the video i'm going inside WinVER. i'm using bj dash honolulu this machine right now is version 1703, right? And I'm using the upgrade task sequence. So I'm going inside my software center. I went to operating systems. I found the task sequence. I hit install, install operating system. Right now it's installing and eventually it's gonna do the process. Now, this takes 77 minutes and I, I did not wanna do it live with you guys because it's like, oh, yeah, 77 minutes, that's just too long. So we're gonna let this run. Right, and we're gonna check on it. Like you can see right now that the installation progress is the task sequence is running. That's awesome. And we're gonna start the PowerPoint because the PowerPoint is where all the goodness is at. All right, this is this is where I show you guys how I did it. Okay, so let's uh, switch to scene. We're gonna let those two things running in the background right now. So we got two things running in the background. We have a virtual machine, a Windows 7 32 bit operating system virtual machine running and creating itself within our proxmox ve 5.1 infrastructure using the lenovo x3500 m5 wow that's a mouthful and then we also have uh this video right here running in the back doing the task sequence this is what i'm going to show you guys how to create within your environment all right beautiful look at that i had some problems with the with the performance so but it still runs okay all right so first things first, there's two ways that you can implement this. You can either do it servicing plans or the upgrade task sequence. Now this is really up to you. For me, servicing plan, 
uh, is a new feature within SCCM. I tried it out. It didn't work with me. And the reason why, because I didn't have a machine that was compliant. Even though my BJ Honolulu machine was 1703, it was turned off. SCCM didn't register. It took a while. But I my approach that I like to push out is using the upgrade task sequence because it's just super simple. Okay, so to get yourself up and running with servicing plan is the following. Uh, you need to upgrade your Windows 10 ADK. That's the first thing that you need to do, okay? Uh, I would love to see Microsoft upgrade their Windows 10 ADK installation uh, package because you have to remove your current ADK installation first. You have to do it manually and then install the new version. Why can't you just have it within the package? It's, you know, double click on it. It finds the version that you want. You know, it finds the version that you have within your machine, removes it, and then installs it why it's just extra steps so right now i upgraded my adk to the latest one which is 1709 and i am running uh config manager 1706 1706 with the adk is able to push out 1709 okay so if you are still running 1702 uh you're only able to push out 1703 build 1703 windows you're not able to push out 1709. So to push out 1709, Windows 10 1709 within your infrastructure to your people, to your clients, to your machines on the floor, whatever, whatever, uh, you got to make sure your, configura your configuration manager 1706 is up to date. Uh, I believe Microsoft also pushed out a hotfix. So make sure it's pretty patched up because there is a glitch. And I'm going to show you guys what the glitch is and uh, also upgrade your ADK. Now, I upgraded my ADK within my BJ SCCM. So this is the my SCCM machine right here. This is one. This is the one that we have been using throughout the entire show. And uh, the version for that is uh, 16299. Six gigs. It's, it gets bigger and bigger every time you upgrade. It's just crazy. Okay. So. First things first, within your SCCM console, you want to go inside software libraries, expand overview, Windows 10 servicing, and you want to right click on Windows 10 updates. You want to click on synchronize software updates. You're going to get this nice little information dialog box. You want to hit yes. Now, this process takes a while, so go get a cup of coffee, relax, come back, and then check on it. Once you click on yes, eventually when you go inside here, you're going to see all this crazy stuff. Now, you're going to see a lot of doubles, and this is one of the glitches with 1706, from my understanding. I, I believe that hot fix that they pushed out fixed that issue. From here, I did a search of feature update to Windows 10. Let me zoom in for you guys so you guys can see. I just typed in feature update to Windows 10 version 1709, and I want the English US version. Now, again, this is a bug, but technically, you just only need one feature. It doesn't matter which one you, you pick. As long as you pick it okay this is the one that you want and do not worry these notes are going to be posted within the github repository hopefully at the end of the show so you would get your copy of it and you know you could take notes once you review this video again next thing you want to do is for servicing plan right this the whole point of this right here to check is one your sccm is able to receive the feature update and then two, you're double checking and saying, okay, it's there. You confirmed it. Now, next thing that you need to do is create a servicing plan. So within uh, servicing plan, you're going to right click, click on servicing plan, get the nice little wizard, give it a name. I gave it something super self-explanatory, right? Windows 10 V 1709 service plan. And the target collection, I hit browse and you pick where, you know, your specific clients that you want this package to push to. I pick all workstations and click on next and now specify the deployment ring. Now by default, it's set to zero. This right here, specify the windows readiness state to which the servicing plan should apply. You have two options. You have release ready or business ready. How many days after Microsoft has published a new upgrade, would you like to wait before deployment in your environment? I set it to zero because this is my lab, but you might have to change it to something a little different. It's 60 days and 120 days. Okay, click on next. Now for the property filters, uh, there's two of them. The first one is language and you click on items to find and you pick your language. I pick English, bam. Next one that you could do is title. 
You could do required if you want, but I did land winch and title because it just makes sense. Hit title, uh, click on text to find, and right here you enter the text of 1709 comma en for English dash us. Now this is going to change for you depending on where you're located and then click on add and then click on OK. And then you get to two. Now, if you want to preview it, you're going to click on the preview right here and you're going to see the two features. Now, this is the same thing that we did within all Windows 10 updates, but it's just another way to confirm that they are there. OK, and it doesn't matter that you see two of them. It's just a bug. I haven't. I well, I push out the hot fix on my machine, but this is before the hot fix. Click on close. And once you click close, click next, you're going to get this window right here. Uh, configure the scheduled details for this deployment. Really up to you. I left everything as the default. Default is as soon as possible. Now, the user experience, you can change to whatever you want. Uh, I changed it to display and software center and show all notifications. And I checked off software update installation, also system restart. This makes sense because it's a it's a huge installation plus it's an upgrade to a new build and you want your machine to reboot okay click next and right here you want to create a new package so with the create with the name you give it a name i gave it something super simple windows 10 uh 2 v 1709 and the path has to be a unc path uh unc yeah uh so i dropped it inside this sources folder that we created since the very beginning that we started doing SCCM together. And uh, within there, I created an OSD, OS, OS upgrade packages, and I already had a Windows 10 XCC4, and I just created a subfolder of V1709, okay? Uh, the DP, click on add, uh, distribution point DP, for short for me, <laughs> that's what I like to say, DP. Uh, click your, your DP, all right? and add it and there you go if you have multiple go for it click on next and by default you could do download software updates from the internet this is i leave it as is and but if not if you have a centralized location go for it i just let the default click on next uh pick your language i think this is set this is already configured automatically for you so you don't have to worry about but if you in a different country choose your language click next nice little summary next and done all green the green check marks are always a good thing uh you click on your service plan this is the new service plan that we created well i already created behind the scenes but you know you know what i mean uh from here you're gonna right click on it and click run now you're gonna get this nice little warning right now you uh you have uh, information not a warning uh you have initiated an action to run the selected rule when new software updates are found by the rule, the software updates would be added to the software update group specified in the rule. Okay. Click OK. And I went inside that UNC path because I want to show you guys that that V1709 gets big. That folder gets really huge. And the only reason why I want to show you guys the size is because SCCM right now with all the new updates and all the new features that Microsoft is pushing out to SCCM, you got to make sure you have a strong uh, machine that's capable of handling everything with a huge partition, okay? You can't get away with no 500 gigs anymore. You gotta have at least four or five terabytes of you know, storage for your SCCM and have a lot of memory on it. I had to bump up my memory and my CPU within my virtual machine to make everything run smooth because it was just crawling with everything that I was doing to it. Okay. And next thing that you want to do is you want to go on software libraries, overview, software updates, and the deployment packages. Now, deployment packages, again, when we did the whole service plan, we created a package. And the reason why I'm showing this slide right here is you want to click on it. And you want to make sure that this guy right here is green and it says success one. Uh, normally, it says in progress one. You just got to make sure that it says success one is green. I like before you move on now that's me i like to make sure everything is green before i continue doing the next step and you kind of find myself waiting until it changes green i refresh and just wait just wait it out wait it out wait it out until it's green and then i continue with the next step now like i said i wasn't able to i'm gonna show you guys real quick let's go inside my sccm so within my packages yeah, if I go inside, let's see, do, 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 let me see, let me see, let me see, right here, 
if you click on the on the node if I click on the node right here I'll show you guys if I click on the main node of Windows 10 servicing crap come on what happened software library Windows servicing when you click on the node right here it gives you a nice little graph of what's uh, compliance and I, I didn't have any machines well, I don't have any machines now because the machine that I did have was upgraded. So the servicing plan did not work out for me. But I would love for one of you guys to test it out in your environment. You definitely might have machines that need 1709. Try the servicing plan. Let me know. Uh, it should work. I just had problems. Now, the method that I tried that I definitely know 100% is going to work is upgrade task sequence. Because if we look at the video it is still going it's again 77 minutes and it's going jesus christ i know it's going uh it worked all right so let's go back into the slide also let's uh i want to show you guys that the machine is still here this is the machine booyah <laughs> it's still going uh next thing is upgrade task sequence for windows 10 computers now this is the method that i like using the most and it's a little bit more work because you need to import the ISO contents of the Windows 10 1709. You're probably saying to yourself, how the hell can I get the, the 1709 ISO? Well, the only way that you could get it is if you have a Windows uh, volume license account. You could download it that way. If you're testing this out for fun or you're messing around within your build, you go inside Microsoft website and you're able to download it and use it for, I believe, 90 days, right? Test everything out. So the process on this is pretty simple. Uh, I dropped it inside my uh, my sources folder, OSD, OS, OS images, Windows 10 x64, created a subfolder V1709. I mounted my ISO to my virtual machine. And I just copy and paste the content in there. That's it, four gigs. Once you do that, you wanna go inside your console and you wanna go inside software library overview operating systems and operating system images you want to right click on that guy and you're going to add an operating system image you got you're going to get this nice little window and i want you guys to, to you know take note on this you got to make sure it's the unc path and make sure it's the path of where the image.wim file okay is not the main root okay the image.wim file is normally located within the sources folder okay once you do that, click on next, give it a name and give it a version. Now, by by default, the name that it provides, I think it's Windows 10 Enterprise. No, not Enterprise, Education. You can leave it as is, as the default, or you could change it. Okay, I changed it, obviously. And click on next. Nice little summary and click next. All green check marks. I love those green check marks. Trust me, I love those green check marks. And close. And there goes our operating system image. As always, like I said, uh, click on it. So this little guy right here would change. And actually, right click on it. Sorry, right click on it. And you want to distribute the content. This, this won't happen until you distribute the content. All right. So you're going to see gray. The only way this is going to start, you know, you're going to see at least an in progress or success or failed is you have to distribute the content. So you right click on your new operating system that you, you know, import it, right? <laughs> and distribute the content, get the nice little wizard, click on next. You're going to pick your DP, you know, check it off, and next, nice little summary, next, and close. Real simple. And again, click on it. And this right here, if everything works well, your SCCM is behaving, it should say in progress one, and it takes some time, and eventually it's going to say success one. Like I said, when this gets like this, I refresh like a madman a couple of times and it doesn't go automatically to this. I just walk away until it's green for me to continue doing something else. Okay. Next thing that you need to do within your operating system upgrade package, you're going to right click on it and add a operating system upgrade package. Okay. Now the path right here is the root of where that setup.exe file is located. Okay. It's not the dot, it's not the install.wim file. It is the path of where the setup.exe file is located. Okay. So this path right here, I'm going to 
exit out this path right here is basically let's go in here let's go to run I just want to show you guys excellent let me zoom in so you guys get a better view so sources so that path right we need to point it to this so OS OS images this right here this right here this this path because it needs this it needs that setup.exe file that's what this is basically looking for right now what we're doing for the install.wim file you're going inside your sources okay all right let's get out of that let's go back okay cool hopefully everyone understands now next thing that you need to do once you click on next you're gonna you know give it a name get a version give it a version <laughs> uh give it a comment click next nice little summary next all green check marks that's always a good thing right green check marks and then click close and then there it goes there goes our operating system upgrade package click on it and like always you're going to right click on it go to distribute content again this part right here is not going to do anything until you distribute the content okay you have to distribute the content every time you do something to your sccm like you're importing an operating system or creating an upgrade package you have to distribute the content you get the nice little wizard click on next you need to add your dp boom most likely a lot of you have uh, a lot of dps so you could do a group pick your dp okay boom next next and that green check mark i love those green check marks click close and then like always click on it or highlight it whatever you want and you're gonna get the in progress one and this is me like a madman click 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 click, click. <laughs> until it changes green because you know, i'm impatient but it takes some time. Uh, once it changes green, you continue. This this is me. A lot of people would do it differently. But for me, I like to see everything green. It's like a go. Okay, you could go. Yellow to me is like, okay, wait a minute, dude. Don't do anything because if you do something, it's going to cause problems. So once I see that green, you continue with the next step. And that's basically creating a task sequence. So again, within software libraries, overview, operating systems, you're going to see the task sequence uh, option. Right click on it and create a task sequence you can also do an mdt task sequence but i'm just going straight to sccm get the nice little wizard i think by default it's going to say install an existing image package you want to choose upgrade an operating system from an upgrade package that's the one that you want click on next give it a nice beautiful name that is the task sequence name that i provided upgrade to windows 10 v1709 right and let's go into that and see how it is it's still going Jesus, it's still going. Let me see if I can fast forward a little bit. I'm literally trying to fast forward for you guys. It's already 27 minutes in. All right. Did something. All right. So we're going to let it continue. It's still running. I mean, imagine me deploying this live with you guys. We never leave. I know probably some of you guys would stay and just see if it fails or it's or it works. All right, so let's go back here. So once you give it your task sequence name, get a give it a description. It's up to you. Click on next and upgrade package. We're gonna hit click on browse, and we're gonna pick the package that we created within the operating system upgrade packages. Right, pretty simple. Click on it, and once you click on it, you're gonna see all these nice little properties. Awesome. Next thing that you want to do is go into the addition index, click on that, and you pick the version that you want to deploy. Now, the BJ Dash Honolulu machine that I upgraded that was currently 1703 and it's upgraded to 1709 was a Windows 10 Enterprise 1703. So it made sense for me to upgrade it to Windows 10 Enterprise. So that's the that's the, the index edition that I picked. You can provide a product key. Because this is my testing lab, most likely I don't want to license it. But the majority of you guys, especially me at my 9 to 5 job uh, and a lot of places that I worked at, uh, I like to have a KVM. KVM? Yeah. I don't, for the life of me, I can't remember what it stands for. I think it's Key Volume Management Server. That basically, if it sees a new machine, if you add a machine within your network and part of Active Directory, it gets licensed automatically with your KVM server. And I do have a video on that, so make sure you search it on the channel and check that out. Uh, once you provide all that information, you don't really need to enter the product key to continue. So click on next. 
and you have include updates. I left it as the default. Again, this is my testing lab, so I don't really care. Uh, but I think best practice is to require any software updates. It's just going to take longer. Like, seriously. You know how many Windows 10 updates are pushed out daily? Crap. That's like the first thing that I do with my Windows 10 machine, my gaming machine at home. I check software updates and let that stuff push out because... That's happened to me in the past. I'm playing video games and I lose a lot of frames per second or my machine starts slowing down because updates are running behind the scenes. And you could disable it, but you know, it's a pain. From here, click on next. Install any applications. Because this is an upgrade, you don't really need to install applications. Most likely, you a lot of you might want to install applications with the new build. It's up to you. It's a good chance to install whatever particular package or application that you want to push out to your users you could do it here click next summary click next all green check marks love those green check marks and click on close and then goes our task sequence and as always when you do something with sccm you either have to deploy or you either have to deploy it or distribute the content to your dp so you want to right click on your new task sequence and click on deploy and task sequence name and the collection so click on browse you can get this nice little warning click ok and pick your you know pick your victims <laughs> so i pick all workstations and ok and click on next on that this is by default as is you can't really change the only thing i think the only thing you could change is the purpose okay you can't really change the availability so because it's going to be pushed out to your uh, configuration management uh, client and then you can schedule it if you leave it as is it's gonna push it right away to your clients when that machine policy cycle goes through and I'm gonna show you guys what I mean so the user experience you can leave it uh, show task sequence progress you could change this as you want if not your your users are gonna see this hey it's rebooting yay it's rebooting it's finally rebooting so it's rebooting right now awesome and I did the recording, I did the recording and everything behind the scenes and I put it on my phone right now. It's being distributed right now to you guys and that's what you're seeing. It's like, imagine me pushing out this upgrade task sequence during the show. All kinds of failure could, could happen. But it, it worked, it worked, so I'm happy. So once you get this window right here, let's go back. Once you get this nice little window, you're gonna click on next. And once you click on next, you, alerts. So by default, I left everything as is. You could change it. It's up to you and your, your environment. Click next, your DP. Uh, the default is download content locally when needed by running the time sequence. And the summary, click next. All green check marks. Love those green check marks. And close it. Now, this is the machine that we're, you know, we, we're actually viewing right now on the, on the screen. Hopefully you guys are able to see. It's at 14% right now. And it's saying, do not turn off your PC. But that's the machine. This is the BJ Honolulu one that we're, we use. It was version 1709. If you, if you like, don't have any patience and you just want to test out your task sequence because you're super excited. You got it up and running. It, it, it's, distributed to your con it's distributed to your DP. You deployed it. Everything is successful. You got green check marks. Everything looks, everything looks like it's working. You know, it's also, it's always awesome to see all those green check marks and you feel so happy about yourself because it looks like it's working, but you really want to test it out to make sure it's like, a, you know, you want to make sure like, okay, it's finally working. So the way that you could do is you, within your Windows 10 machine, you go to control panel, you locate your configuration manager. This is for those individuals that don't have patience. Uh, you go inside actions and locate the machine policy retrieval and the eval cycle. So click on that and hit run. When you hit run, you get this nice little window right here. New software is available. So I'm gonna zoom in for you guys so you guys can see. So you're gonna get this once you run that policy. It does take some time depending on your pipeline within your infrastructure. And when you get this, this is a good thing. So you can click on it. And once you click on it, you get your software center. And within Software Center, you want to go to Operating Systems, and you're going to see your task sequence. Upgrade to Windows 10 v1709. Click on it, and there it goes. So this, that's basically the same thing that we're, we're doing now. Like, right now, it's rebooting. And, oh, wow, wow. Nick of time. That's awesome. So I'm going to forward a little bit.
with for you guys. So it's working on updates. I just forwarded a little bit because it's going to take a while. It's 49% working on updates, 49%. It's awesome. All right, so let's go back inside the slide. Yeah. And that's it. Wow, that's it. That's cool. And yeah, so we did the servicing plan, uh, plan method. Uh, I'm still working on this behind the scenes. Uh, the approach that I showed you guys today is the way that I kind of picked up within the Microsoft site. I just haven't had the chance or have a machine that's able to be compliant to push out the servicing plan. Upgrade task sequence is the way for me. I like doing it this way because I'm that's the way that I'm used to. So and that's the way that it's working. Now Windows 10 v 1709 uh, issues. 1709 has been a headache for me at my house. I haven't had any issues at my home as of yet. I think the only issue that I've come across is uh, graphics card issues. And uh, one of my laptop, my gaming laptops that I play almost every day received 1709 and it just completely crapped out my machine. I wasn't able to play anything. My GPU wasn't able to get upgraded. Everything was extremely slow. It was just an hor it was a horrible, horrible experience. So, like I tell you guys, just make sure you back up your system before you push out these huge builds that Microsoft is pushing out to you guys. And it's kind of sad because they push it out to everyone and it's just, they force it. And I feel like they force it to Windows 10 home users because professionals and enterprise, it takes them a while. So if you are a Windows 10 home user, just make sure you, regardless of what edition you have at home, just make sure you back up your machine. Okay, just make sure you back up your machine if your machine is receiving a huge update like the one that we received a while back ago. All right, right? So let's go back over here. Look at that, it's 54%. Let's look at the stream. We got 20 strong individuals. Love you guys. Thank you so much. You guys are freaking great. Appreciate the love. Look at the server right there. <laughs> it's awesome. Let's look at the chat, see who's, who's there. Now we have awesome OS. We have Benjamin Key King. He says, uh, "Hi, I have just got the 1709 update. I have found it has slowed down my computer since this update. Yeah, get in line, dude. Get in line. I feel the same way." Uh, yep, I agree with you, Benjamin King. He stated there must be a lot of bugs in the 1709 update that Microsoft needs to address urgently. This is true, but as long as your machine has internet access and Windows updates is enabled, you're going to be getting those updates. Yeah. Uh, Benjamin King says, I did fix the slow Hyper-V network issue. It was down to the VMQ option within Hyper-V being enabled. I like that. Thank you for that tip. That's awesome. Thank you, Benjamin, for that tip. We have Ram from Toronto, Canada. Awesome. How's the weather over there? We have uh, Sylvia. Sylvia, I think, right? Everything is great. Oh, my God, from Brazil. Awesome. Beautiful. Welcome, welcome. And we have Gary from Canada. Another Canada. Wow, cool. We have another Adam from Milwaukee. Welcome. We have someone from Turkey. Wow, cool, cool, cool. Dustin, enjoy the teaching videos. I can't watch now, so i catch the video later. There's no problem. This is why it's being recorded. And it's going to be pushed out to the channel pretty soon. And if everything goes well, the notes should be up at the repository. And you guys can get a copy of it, print it out, or use Acrobat Professional to make, you know, edits. And take your notes while everything, you know, while you're watching the video, right? And also, hopefully, if everything goes well, in my part, I will add the timestamps to uh, the video at the bottom of the description so you guys can just click on it and it takes you directly to where you want to go uh, sylvia says can you increase a, a little size of your screen everything is so small here huh well i try to zoom in and zoom out as much as i can for you guys but uh again uh, if i think if you do full screen you could probably see everything is the Proxmox running a nested Hyper-V? Oh, good question. So let's go inside our... Oh, so that's me. Hello. Looking at the stuff. And let's go in here. So, oh, look. 
it's almost done so let's give it a name let's go to btn hd okay my good friend so this is not running a nested uh virtual machine so it looks like i'm running a virtual machine because this is a virtual machine but this virtual machine is on the same network as this machine so i need a machine on the same network so i can access it with the web interface so it, it, that's why it looks like it but this machine is a physical machine that we created a raid 5 system and we are using the web interface to get into it and do our thing so we're going to give it a name let's give it a name because this is almost done too i almost forgot that we started this during the show i'm gonna click next uh we click next on that whatever ask me later uh let's change the time to eastern wow it's already 145 cool and public network and it's finalizing and look at that beautiful 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 yes successful that's awesome that's freaking awesome oh you're probably saying to yourself what are you doing yeah so yeah this machine right here this virtual machine right now that i'm using is attached to the same network as the x3500 that i have it's a physical machine i just needed a machine that could is able to access that you know this ip address okay uh let's go back into the chat and see what's going on oh big r how you doing long time no see big r i noticed you had difficulties Filming the bio screen on the Lenovo server. Does it have it out ban management? Something like. Yeah, it does have it. But, uh, yo, okay. I'm going to be straight off with you guys. I am not a Lenovo server guy. Uh, this is my second Lenovo server that I've had so far. There are ways to get into the BIOS using, uh, I believe it's called. Damn, what's the name of that management? Yeah, for the life of me, I can't remember. But there's a way that you could constantly win and change the BIOS and all that stuff. I am a Dell person. So, <laughs> I mean, if I had a Dell server machine right now, I could be dis I could display that stuff for you guys with no problem. I'm still getting myself used to the Lenovo server, you know, the Lenovo server world. Uh, but they're great machines so far. And I know a couple of you guys have Lenovo servers in within your infrastructure. Uh Big R says KMS server, not KVM. Ah, yes. KVM. Thank you for the correction. Yeah. KVM. Key volume management. Yeah. Sorry about that. Uh, you don't need KMS in activating Windows and Windows A uh, or higher. It's KMS server, not KVM. Okay. KM, KMS. Key management server, not volume management. Okay. Thank you for that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So Big R says you don't need KMS in activating Windows 8 or higher. You can create an active AD activation object. Windows 8 10 clients activate against the object instead. Oh, that's pretty cool. I did not know that. Oh, very interesting. I like that. Thank you, Big R, for letting me know. See, I learned something new with you guys all the time. All right. Big R says the Windows 2012 R2 server wizard activation component. Okay, that's okay. That's the tool. Ooh, cool. Thank you for letting us know. It's built in into Windows, so I'm definitely gonna check that out. Thank you. Thank you so much for that. Uh, we have one individual. I've been watching your YouTube for a long time now. Love them all. Thank you. Thank you for the support. I appreciate it. Love you guys. Thank you. Uh, he says very cold. I can imagine very cold. You have someone from Sweden. Hello, Charles. Yo, what's up? I was talking about the zoom in and out. Oh, okay. Okay. X Clarity is the Lenovo management tool. Ooh, thank you, Brown. I appreciate that. Again, guys, I am not a Lenovo expert. I just have the product testing everything out. I'm, I'm happy that Lenovo hook us up with this stuff. I would love to have other vendors hook me up with servers and I could just, the show would go crazy, right? Uh, Benjamin Keys, Benjamin King, are the Dell R710 servers reliable as I'm thinking of purchasing one? Well, I have a couple of R710s, 20s, and 30s, and they are extremely reliable. Just got to make sure you spec them out. I mean, if you have the budget to spend, spend it. Get the best processor, max it out with the memory, get, uh, get 
I think get the blade with there's a couple blades that come with four bays and eight bays. I normally get the one with eight bays and I just max them out like crazy. Ten terabytes is nonsense. And uh, I normally do like a ESXi server or a Hyper-V infrastructure because that's that's what I like to run. That's what I'm used to. Uh, Sylvia says, I'm a Dell person too. Dell is really easy to manage and configure. Yeah, but I think the only thing I don't like about Dell is just sometimes is their support. Like when you call support and you're talking to the technician, it's like, okay, man, I went through all that. I did the diagnostic. I did that. I did this. I did this. Like, look, I'm telling you what I did and you're telling me to, to do it again. Look, it's not working. Please replace it or give me a damn replacement right now, right? And uh, Gail says Lenovo has a WMI layer now, don't they? Mm. Uh, that I don't know. All right, so let's... I mean, the show is almost over. I think the show is almost over because we got our virtual machine right here. That's fly. Let's uh, let's get into CMD. Let me see if I'm able to talk outside. I should be able to talk outside. And ping google.com. Yeah, I'm able to talk outside. Boo, yeah, look at that. So I'm happy. And the reason why I'm happy is because the last show, we, we couldn't get this far, but got everything working. So I'm happy about that. So let's go back into the, let's go back to this. It's still 86%. Again, I have a video of it. And I'm just going to fast forward it a little bit because it was 77 minutes. And there goes at the very end, finishing up. It did its last reboot. I think this is where I lost connection. This is where I lost connection on the virtual machine. I'm just see, and this this is me establishing the connection again. Open the console. Yeah, because I lost connection, and then right now it's doing its last minutes little things. So let me see if I could just just fast forward a little bit. Ah. Uh, it's really hard because it's it's about a minute and 56 seconds left for it to finish. But I want to show you guys the virtual machine. So this is the virtual machine that we that I upgraded, which was this guy right here. This guy. This is the let me zoom in. See? BJ Dash Honolulu. This is the one that I use during the video or I use the task sequence to push out the 1709. I mean, it was pretty smooth and it's it's a virtual environment. Like, that's, it was one of those things that I hate so much when you do stuff in a virtual environment within your lab. Everything works well, but then when you take it out to the wild, hardware-wise, it's just a lot of crap starts happening. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to open up the software center. And within the software center, it should say completed. Yeah, but this is the machine that I upgraded to version 1709 and from here i'm going to right click on the start menu go to run all right i'm going to show you guys real quick all right i'm going to do a win ver press ok and this is the same machine that i show you guys on the video bj dash honolulu it said 1703 now i say 1709 gorgeous gorgeous operating systems yeah it says installed great look at that I can reinstall it <laughs> Installation status. Look at that. See? That's our upgrade task sequence. Now, if you do the servicing plan, I, I'm, I believe the servicing plan is normally located within the update node. I'm not too sure. But if you are testing out the servicing plan, let me know how that works out. Uh, let's go here. And there you go. Look. It finished. It logged in. I just showed you guys that it is... 1709 how awesome is that super exciting awesome 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 let's go back into the chat and we're gonna we're gonna try to end it today wow pretty pretty awesome today uh we have ram says link for ad object activation hey big r if you have a, a link like a microsoft site that um that provides that information for the ad activation that'd be great I'll definitely add that to my notes for you guys. 
because that would be awesome sauce. And it's right here. So I'm going to show you guys real quick. So I did a Google. Yeah. Activate using Active Directory base activation. Just highlight and do a Google, guys. It's right there. Gives you breakdown information. Step-by-step -step conf uh, configuration. Active Directory base activation. Look at that. Booyah. Look at that. It's right there. Volume activation services. Look at that. It's right there. Right? I'm going to copy and paste this for you guys. I'm going to put it inside... I'm going to put it inside the chat for you guys. There you go. So that's the link that I just I showed you. Activating using Active Directory. The steps are there. That's pretty sweet. I might have to do a video for you guys. So to show you how it works and everything. But it applies to only Windows Server 2012 R2. That's the highest Windows Server that you go up to. That sucks. What's, what's going on, Microsoft? Why can't you do it with Windows Server 2016? So this is a cool thing. Learn something new today. Thank you, Big R, for that. I'm definitely going to try this out. Maybe push out a video. Give you big thanks on you know during the video because, you know, you're the one who told me about it. And uh, that's it, guys. I mean, wow. Awesome. Awesome. Uh, if you have any more questions or concerns, uh, let me know right now before I end it. It is right. It's right now is 1:56 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. This is awesome. An hour video. We did a lot today. We covered a lot, a lot, a lot. All right. So we covered the following today. We did a couple announcements. I give a big shout out to my number one chatter from last week's uh, show. We went over the ISO and Prox Proxmox VE issue that I had. I fixed that problem. We finally deployed a VM using Proxmox VE, so I'm, su I'm super excited about that. There goes the virtual machine. Excelente. Look at that. That's sexy. That's so cool. <laughs> uh, let me go to console. That's pretty cool, man. Uh, right click. I want to go to start task sequence. I mean, task manager. Performance. Look at that. Monster. That's fly. And what else we did? Uh, I showed you guys the video of the process of upgrading a 1703 machine to 1709. Uh, I started that video. Again, it was about an hour. It took about an hour or so. So the upgrade is a long process. Uh, we did uh, upgrade to Windows 10 using SCCM 1706. Make sure you, it's, your SCCM is fully patched to 1706. I think this week or last week, they pushed Microsoft pushed out a new hotfix. So make sure you push that hotfix. Uh, Windows 10 v 1709 issues. Personally, myself, I haven't seen any issues uh, within my 9 to 5 job. The only issue that I've seen is home, personally. And the two methods that we've gone through is servicing plan method and upgrade task sequence. So, other than, other than that, guys, hopefully you guys enjoy. It's 158 right now. I'm going to give it uh, one more minute before we end it. If you have any more questions or concerns, let me know. Uh, I am making a note right now on the Active Directory thing because I will definitely, definitely do a video for you guys on that. I'm interested on the whole Active Directory and volume license activation. That's pretty awesome. That's awesome. Okay, uh, we have Chad says, uh, Ram says, good live session. Thank you, my good man. Thank you. Chad Richard says, enjoy today's episode. Thank you. Uh, Sylvia says, applying using SCCM with Pixie Boot. I tried that and had a lot of issues. Whoa. Whoa. With the Pixie Boot, do you have one thing? You have to have WDS. WDS should not be configured. You just have to install it and I believe install it, but don't configure it. Um, should it be configured? I'm trying to remember. <laughs> I'm trying to remember, should it be configured? Let me see something. I'm checking something real quick for you guys. Let's see. Boop. I don't think it needs to be configured. It's like one of those things, Windows Deployment Services. If you guys wonder what I'm doing, I'm doing this right now. Yeah. So, like I said, it's not configured. You have to install the row. Make sure it's installed. Also, make sure that you add the row within your SCCM. 
okay? You have to add that row and make sure it's live. That's that's the way that you get your pixie boop. And also you also you also have to have a boot image also in place. Okay. Uh, I think if I go into time administration, go to site configuration, sites, and within your sites, if I click on that, wait, actually servers and site system roles, you click on your primary. You gotta make sure control V. All right, so I just went inside administration, within administration, overview, site configuration, servers and site roles, pick your DP. Within your DP, you got to make sure you have, uh, where is it, where is it, where is it, where is it? I forgot which role, because I think they changed the name of it. I think they changed the whole Pixie role name of it. It used to be Pixie, and it changed it. Yeah, I think they changed the name. Not too sure what's the name. But these are the site roles that you should have up and running if you want WSUS to work and, and your web servers point will work, components, your DP management. I'm trying to remember which one is the Pixie. I think one of the videos and one of the one of the videos that we did together of the show, we did the configuration of the SEC. I'm just follow one of those videos. I have it all there. But it's there. It's the the channel has all the information. You all you gotta do is just find it, look at it, check it out. All right, so we're gonna end it from there. Uh, it is two oh one. Thank you so much, guys. A um, couple of people. Uh, see, okay. So Ram says no need to configure anything on WDS. It's just you need to install the role, right? Uh, Big R says, good video, off topic. I found a way to Pixie boot MDT with EFI PCs. Huh. Using DHCP, Big R? Because I know with, with DHCP, you just have to add those uh, rules. Once you add those rules, you're able to Pixie boot with no problem. That's, that's, that's how I've done it in the past. But if you've done another way, please share. I love that. Uh, Dave B says, I just started with MDT Windows 10 3 I can't get rid of the mixed reality portal. Can you do a video of getting rid of all the bloatware? P.S. You helped me so much in MDT lessons. Uh, that's pretty interesting. I could make a note of it. I could definitely make a note on that. I'm just writing notes. So I'm just writing notes right here. The notes will help me. Okay. So MDT, Windows 7. You're deploying Windows 10, 1703. And you can't get rid of the mixed reality portal and uh, bloatware. That's what you call it, bloatware. Now, my other question is, what version of 1703 are you pushing? Because, you know, if you're getting it within the... If you're getting it within the volume license site, they have different versions. And I think one I think one ISO is, is like without bloatware. Okay, Ram says, look at the DP properties for the Pixies. Oh, thank you so much, Ram. See, this is what I'm talking about. This is why I love you guys. Because without you, so right click, go to properties on the DP. And let it load up. It's loading, loading. And Pixie, there you go. Thank you. Thank you, Ram. I appreciate that. See, this is why I have you guys here to remind me because I forget things. I'm getting old. I know this stuff. It's just like when you guys put me on on blast, I'm like, oh, like, but trust me, I, I know how to do this stuff like with my eyes closed, but sometimes you forget. But thank you so much. When you go inside administra uh, administration, overview, site configuration, servers and site system roles, pick your DP. Within the uh, distribution point right here in the row, right click on it, go to properties, just like Ram suggested. Thank you so much for that. And there's a Pixie uh, tab. So all you have to do is just check this off. Just make sure you have your WDS installed. Don't configure it. Make sure it's installed. And also make sure you have your boot images within your uh, software library. Boot images are there and current. Okay. Cool, 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 cool. Yeah, you guys are really, really going today. Big R says, yes, you can use options, but normally it only allows DHCP options. Big R, man, if you have if you have uh, suggestions, I would love to hear how you did it. Please uh, shoot me an email or once the video is done and completed and 
load it at the channel leave a comment okay uh Sylvia says, thank you one more time. Your lives are always great. Your lives are always great. We'll always try to represent Brazil. Awesome. Thank you so much. Brazil all the way. Uh, Day B says, I build an enterprise image. Wait, wait. You build the enterprise image for Fortune 500 companies. This is a challenge. You're building an image? Wait a minute. You're creating a golden image? Ah, no. You should know how I feel about golden image. For anyone, for anyone out there, that uh no don't give out your email like that dude for anyone out there that has been with me since the very beginning i cannot stand golden images i don't like golden images ah no <laughs> chat says and in, in, uh, 1709 enterprise i am capable of uninstalling mixed reality once i have removed it i sip prep and capture mdt okay 1709 enterprise interesting so that's that's an option that you could do, Dave B. Okay, Chad. Hopefully, Chad and Dave B get together, hook, you know, talk to each other. That's an option right there as well. You could remove it. If you're creating a golden image, that's the best approach that you could do. You you get into you get inside your audit mode, remove all the nonsense that you want to remove with that machine. You sit prep it, and then you're good to go. You capture it. I cannot stand golden images. Oh, I cannot. I cannot, I cannot. Uh, Big R says you can set up DACP policies to give out option paths on the boot files. Hmm. Wait a minute. Are you Big R? So let me show you something real quick. Big R, are you are you talking about this? Let's go inside BJ MDT. So this is the first machine that we created together throughout the entire show. This is my Active Directory and all that other good stuff. So let's get inside my DHCP. That's my DNS, DHCP. Uh, Big R, are you referring to this? Let it load up for a bit. Are you referring to this right here? Let me see. Let me open this up a little bit. Let me uh, zoom in. It's expand uh, IPv. Uh, server options no are you talking about this server options because the way that i have it is by uh where are you oh, oh scope my backs sorry uh this is how i have it within my uh scope options i could put it on the server options but I, I put it in here so it's it's being broken down by this this is how i do it now it's pointing the the boot server is pointing to my SCCM, but I have to change this and also change the server host name to my MDT because that's how originally that's how I had it with one of the shows. And then when I started doing more SCCM with you guys, I, I changed it to the SCCM IP address. So I was one I was wondering, Big R, is this what you're referring to? All right. Wow. Today today is uh. Real chatty today. I'm loving it. Thank you. Thank you. I love the I love the passion. And uh <laughs> see Day B says yes, golden, sad face, <laughs> laugh out loud. Yeah, I'm I'm not really I'm not passionate about golden images. I think the only time I do a golden image, and I don't really call it a golden image, I call it a reference image, is when I'm dealing with servers. And I've I've done uh videos and as well as you know live shows with you guys creating that stuff i'm i just don't like i just don't like golden images for me it's just it's too many headaches i like the plain jane simple approach uh you deploy it you pick a task sequence or you might have all that stuff automated automatically uh it deploy a partitions your machine it reformats it partitions it install the operating system once it installs the operating system, it installs the applications. Once it installs the applications, you might have any custom stuff that you need to install. And then it push out Windows updates. Once Windows updates are pushed out, it adds it to Active Directory, shuts down, done. Done. That's that's normally for me at my nine to five job, that process takes about 25 to 30 minutes. And that's one machine. And it all and it, and it depends how many Windows updates are being pushed out within my WSUS. When I when I push out Windows updates within MDT, I normally do it 
with MIWSUS because I already have a set of, of security and critical updates already approved and it's grabbing it from there. Okay, that's the way I like to do it. And a lot of you might do it different. Big R says, I was under the impression it only works with one path. Uh, how does it know which boot file to pick up? Oh, okay. Good question. Ah, come on. You guys are keeping me here longer than what I want to be. But you know what? You guys want to learn. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. So let's go back into here. Okay. So the way that I did this, right? When I boot a machine uh, that's enabled with UEFI Unify, right? 6486 or it's a BIOS. If you go inside policies, this is where all the magic happens. Okay. So I'm going to right click on this. Go to properties. Uh, actually, wait, wait, wait. I'm trying to think. I'm trying to think. I'm trying to think. Give me one second. I'm trying to think. Because this uh, policies tells you the boot name and all that stuff. No, this is, I'm trying to think of something else. Give me one second. I'm trying to remember how I did it. It's one of those things like once you set it, you forget it. And I hate it. I hate it when it's like that. I'm trying to remember where is that. Properties. Okay, here it goes. Now I remember. <laughs> so the way that I set it up or the way that the uh, machine knows to boot to either a Unify or BIOS. See, I always forget. So for the Unify, let's say 64-bit. And it doesn't really matter if it's 86 or 64, but for the 86-bit one, let's go to properties. And within properties, if you go into conditions, this is where the magic happens. Okay. So if I edit this guy right here, this is what happens. You got the vendor class equals to. Microsoft Windows 2000 options, and then you're adding this right here. Uh, I think the show with that we did together when we, um, oh, I'm trying to remember, when we did the whole pushing out an operating system to a server using Unify, I, I went over all this stuff. So just check out that show. I don't remember the number of it, but it's, it's around there. No, press the wrong command. All right, so let's get out of that. Awesome. All right, so Chad Richard says, based on the rules specified in your policy, Unify 32 64 legacy. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, BJ, include the updates in your reference image. <laughs> BJ, include the updates in your reference image. <laughs> All right, man, so... Right now, we go. Oh, wow, we've gone already an hour and 12 minutes. Uh, thank you so much, guys, for everything. Um, yeah, I had a blast. Uh, I don't know. Uh, next week is going to be episode 30. I have the slightest clue of what's going to happen in episode 30. Uh, so you just gotta, gotta come by, stop by, check it out. What's going to happen? I think the following week is Thanksgiving. I'm not going to have a show because hopefully you guys are enjoying uh, family time and eating a lot of turkey, leftovers, and all that good stuff. Hopefully you guys enjoyed uh, today's episode. Very, very informative. We did a lot today. We covered the, the last bit of the Proxmox VE. We created a virtual machine. Super happy. Uh, we did servicing plan uh, with SCCM deploying a Windows 10 1709 as well as creating an upgrade task sequence I will post all the up I will post all the notes within the github repository so you guys could grab it and also I created a discord group for the server room I know a lot of you guys requested that on the last show click on the link at the bottom of the description join uh, I don't know how I'm going to integrate it with the server room as of yet. But start the conversation there. Most likely you guys give me ideas and then I could just push out more content for you guys. Hopefully you guys enjoy and I catch you guys on the next show. Peace out. So how the hell you turn this thing off? I always forget. Hmm. I think if I press this button. <laughs> um I think if I press this button, all right, I'm out of here.